All right. Uh, we're going to get into the Word of God this morning. Uh, we're going to... This isn't... A... Man, about time. Oh, God. Yeah. Love that. Let's get into that thing. You know, I was talking to Ricky before service. He's like, man, we should just stay here all day doing this. And I was like, sweet. I like that. And, uh, and so we're just going to do this all day. So if you need a lunch break, sorry. Uh, we'll order out, get some Domino's maybe. I don't know. And uh, they deliver so we can do this. Now, last week we talked about the promised land and the and what the promised land is to us and how that's that's the place of victory that that God had brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and they they got they they, they left Egypt and entered the wilderness on their way to the promise we see where that's representing the coming out of Egypt was them being delivered from sin but there's more to life than just being delivered from sin there's more to life than just being saved there's something more that you don't have to live a defeated, saved life. That you can live a life of promise, a life of blessing, a life of hope. That you can have that. That's, it is accessible for you. And that's what it meant to enter into the promised land, was entering into the promises of God. But as, as we saw last week, the, 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 the 12 spies got sent out and they're over there for 40 days eating some giant fruit and doing some things. And, and they see a couple of giants over there. And so they get back and, and that's the only thing of all the, the blessings and the, the fruitfulness that was waiting for them. The, all, the thing that they got hung up on is there's some very large people over there. Now, that, that's not the problem. The, the pro, the, your God is bigger than anything that stands in your way. Did you know that? Yeah. Your God is bigger. So now today what we want to look at is those that actually got to enter in. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 5 today. Joshua chapter 5. And in, in, we've seen the children of Israel, the, the God's people that have been in the wilderness. What really, in, in, according to Deuteronomy, uh, I believe it's chapter 6, or Deuteronomy chapter 1. It, it literally talks about the journey from Egypt to the, the promised land should have taken 11 days. Now, there was a 40-day period in there where the law was given and all that, but the actual journey was an 11-day journey. So, what happened that they got hung up for 40 years? They're out there for 40 years because they refused to believe that their God was bigger. We can't live our lives with God in a box. The minute you start thinking, my God can't, or this problem is too big, or the, 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 the disease that they labeled me with, I can't even pronounce. It, it, whatever that situation is, your God is bigger. Amen. God is bigger than Jillian Bars. God is bigger than cancer. God is bigger than drug addiction. He's bigger. So it doesn't matter what giant is there. God is bigger. So after 40 years, all of those, the, the fighting men, as we're going to see, the, the, they all die off. And the only ones that are left are the people who were born in this wilderness experience. So they, this is what we're looking at as they're getting ready to, to possess the land. And they've heard about some things. We've seen the children of Israel have crossed the Jordan River at this point. The, the Jordan River, they didn't build a bridge. You know, they, they didn't, you know, float across the river. They walked across the Jordan River on dry land. The rivers parted. The, the children of Israel walked through. Uh, so estimations say roughly maybe a million people walked through. A couple hundred thousand at the least have walked across this river. That's a pretty big thing. And all of the people in the land have seen what has happened. And they are freaked out. Okay, uh, chapter five, verse one of Joshua. Now, when all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over, their hearts melted in fear and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. They were all ready for this fight. They see all the Israelites gathered on the other side of the river. And then whenever they see this miracle of God, the, the sea, the, the river, excuse me, parts and everybody walks across on dry land. All the other kings are like, uh oh, 
All of those giants, remember, that were supposed to be in the land are like, uh-oh. This, God is with them. Isn't it crazy how the, the devil knows God is with you? The enemy knows that God is on your side. All of heaven knows that God is on your side. But you have a hard time believing it. You have a hard time wrapping your head around it. Even after God has brought you through all of the stuff he's brought you through. All of the victories that have come in your life. All of the times where God has delivered and spoke life over you. I mean, are you here today? Amen. This is a victory. Because I know some of you should have been dead in a ditch a few years ago. Amen. But God spoke. Yep. God moved. Even when you didn't deserve it, God intervened. And he declared that you belong to him and no devil, no enemy is going to take you. Nobody. The devil knows it. God knows it. Now you got to wrap your mind around it. Do you know that you are loved by God? Do you know that he is on your side? That that enemy that you face is just an opportunity for God to move. <clears throat> so these kings... They've seen what God has done, and they're freaking out. They know they're about to go to war. The children of Israel are about to go and possess the land. But there's something God's got to do first. And if you're going to war, this ain't the thing you want to hear. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelites at Gibbeth Haraloth. Now this is why he did so. All those who came out of Egypt, all the men of military age, died in the wilderness on the way after leaving Egypt. All the people that came out had been circumcised. But all the people born in the wilderness during the journey from Egypt had not. The Israelites had moved about in the wilderness 40 years until all the men who were of military age when they left Egypt had died since they had not obeyed the Lord. For the Lord had sworn to them that they would not see the land he had solemnly promised their ancestors to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So he raised up their sons in their place, and these were the ones Joshua circumcised. They were still uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. Man, he keeps talking about this thing, right? Quit talking about circumcision. It's not comfortable. If you don't know what circumcision is, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Ain't going to do it. You can go home and look it up. Webster's or something, you can search for it, you can figure it out. It, it just... It, he keeps harping. We've got to cut some things away. I know we, went, we crossed the river and we're about to go to war, but we can't fight with what we're hanging on to. That imagery should not be there. Not good. They go and they circumcise these poor people. These guys before they're going to war. Now, if you're among this group of men, you're thinking the enemy is watching. We don't, we need to go fight. We don't need to do this. We're, we, we're strong right now. Let's go do that. We're strong in our own strength. We can take on that enemy. But God says, no, we're going to circumcise. We're going to cut some things away that should not be there. See, there's an enemy that God wants to give you victory over, but you can't have that victory as long as you're holding on to some things that are in your life. 
We talked about giants that needed to be defeated last week, about giants, the enemy that had taken possession of your promise. But today I want to talk about the giant of you. <coughs> the giant that is you and the things that you allow into your life that God has said that don't belong. And I'm not talking about gray area. You know what gray area things are? That's the things that the Bible doesn't really give us a clear picture on. But, you know, so many people get so hung up on gray areas and we get all embattled and, and outraged over gray area things. Things that, it, 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 these are things that could go either way. We don't, you know, it, it just, it, there's no clear word from God on some of this stuff. And you're just going to have to allow, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you as to whether this is sin in your life or it's not. But the things that we struggle with more often than not, we get so hung up on gray area things whenever it's the black and white issues that we really struggle with. The black and white issues being the things that he wrote down, the things that he told us, don't do that. But because we haven't been in the word, we a lot of times don't even know that what we're doing is wrong. We don't, maybe we just have, you know, just this, we, we've never been told that the sin that we're walking in, it, it, that it, it's just, it, that, that sin separates us from God. And that sin, sometimes those things need to be cut out of our life. I've seen so many people that are, that, that, that they, they're either ignorant to the fact that they're in sin, or maybe they just don't care. Or they think God's okay with my sin. He, he knows I'm going to sin. He knows I'm, I'm, I'm jacked up anyway, right? So he, know, he bought me broken and, and I'm going to be broken. But he doesn't want you to stay broken. He wants to fix you. He wants to change some things in your life. He wants to make you better. You've already, you've given your life to him. I hope. You've asked him to come in, but now there needs to be some cutting away. There's some areas in your life that God's saying, you can't inhabit the promises if you're hanging on to this sin. Now, we can go into specifics and we can talk about all kinds of sins that I'm aware of in your lives. But I don't want to, that, that's, you know, you know what's there. You know what needs to change. You know what needs to be cut away in order to obtain those victories. Sometimes the giant problem is the thing that we won't let go of. Maybe there's sexual immorality. You know. You know, one thing you never have to point out to somebody is the fact that they're a sinner. When somebody comes and they're broken before God and they're, just, they're, they're, they're repenting of their sins, it doesn't take me telling you, well, you got all this stuff. You, you got to get all this out. Hey, that's the Holy Spirit's job. The Holy Spirit will do that. He's great at his job. Great at it. But there are things in your life that the Holy Spirit's been telling you, you can't have this victory if you can't cut this thing away. See, part of what they were doing was they were entering into a covenant relationship with their God. This was literally the symbol of the covenant that they would do this so that people would know this is our God. That we have entered into this relationship with him. And we've entered into this relationship with our God through the blood of Jesus Christ. The atoning sacrifice that he's given, that the, 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 he died on a cross. We're about to celebrate the coming of, his, of, of our Messiah as a baby. And in a few months, we'll celebrate the giving of his life. And we'll celebrate his resurrection in power. 
So many of us, we, we've experienced, we, we can experience the, the, the salvation experience and we can ask God to come, Jesus to come into our life and he can, he can make us new. But there's some things you've got to do to become victorious. There's some things you've got to do to enter into those promises. Are you willing to go through some of you, God may be talking to you about some relationships that you're in. I know it, it, it ain't comfortable, is it? I'm sure a circumcision ain't real comfortable either. No anesthesia. Let's just get out a rock, sharpen it up and start cutting away. Not good. But some of us. Oops. But some of us are in some relationships that aren't godly. And God's not honoring that relationship. Some of you may just be, uh, you may be in a relationship with somebody that, and it may not even be a necessarily a bad thing. They, they may not be a bad person. It may not be a bad relationship, but it's bad for you. I don't know. Maybe some of you are holding on to bitterness. Maybe you're holding on to anger. Maybe something's happened to you in your life. The thing about circumcision is it hurts. When God starts cutting things away, it's not a pleasant thing. It's not like he, he pulls out the scalpel and starts hacking on you and, and moving stuff out of your life. You're like, woohoo, glad that's going. <laughs> no, it's not pleasant at the time, but it's necessary. I remember when I was a kid and I had I kept getting uh, what is a strep throat and my tonsils kept poisoning my body. And so the next, you know, they were like, we got to take these tonsils out. And I'm thinking, but I was born with that and I shouldn't have to be, you know, you shouldn't just go in there and rip those things out of me. I did not want them to take my tonsils. I didn't. I, I was very opposed to it. But luckily, my parents knew better. And dad said, you're going to do it or I'm going to beat you. And then you're going to do it. <laughs> you can't argue against that. No. So they put you in. They put me in the hospital, the whole thing. You know, they, it was funny because it was like all the kids in my family were all in the hospital at the same time. They're like, just get it all done. You know, just run them all through the ringer. <laughs> Rip all those tonsils out of them. So we're all in the hospital at the same time. It was crazy. I don't know what my parents were thinking. But so they got all these sick kids after this. And, and, but it was a necessary thing. It was necessary. I remember they kept telling me I needed to get some work done on my teeth. And I kept saying, oh, good luck with that. I ain't letting anybody touch these pearly whites. Well, they're more like yellow stained things. But I, I, I didn't want to do it. And for a long time, they kept telling me, you know, you need to get that work done. You need to get that work done. It's all right. After a while, as I lay on my couch screaming. In desperate need of a root canal. I realized as I went and people are the people were like, you know, it's funny because somebody had to get a root canal the other day. Are you kidding you? I think it was. And he was like, so was it a pleasant experience or was it rough? And I was like, it was the best thing that ever happened. Because I was in so much pain leading up to that. The root canal was a cakewalk. And I was like, the, I remember the doctor, he's doing all this stuff. I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, no, this is good compared to what I was just going through. Let's do this. Start drilling, man. Let's do this. They get that thing out of there. It, it was necessary. And there are some things that are necessary for God to remove from your life. But the thing is, he won't remove them. Unless you let him. He's a gracious God, isn't he? Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Tells us. To set aside those things that hinder. And the sin that so easily entangles. So 
obviously we see a difference between what's hindering and, and sin. So there's some things that hinder that aren't necessarily sin. Some things that just hold you back. Some things that are acceptable, but they're not beneficial. And then there's those things, those sin things that are in our life that we can actually quit doing. You say, I can't quit. Get God in your life. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he, he empowers you Amen. to be able to set that down. He can do it and he'll do it for you. I've seen him do it through some pretty big things. I've seen him deliver. I've seen him set people free. I've seen people who were strung out on meth put it down. I've seen people who heroin screamed at them. Their body ached for it. And they put it down. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do the same. There's some things that need to be cut away. Some things that you might not be very fond of letting go of. That God wants to remove from your life. And I promise you, it's going to hurt. But believe me when I say it's a good hurt. Because what's waiting on the other side is victory. What's waiting on the other side of all of this pain is a promise. And you can walk in victory. You can live in victory. You know, I think too many times we give the devil far too much credit. We want to blame the devil for all of our stupid because it gets the attention off of us. Why did you do that? The devil made me do it. Oh, I'm really being tested today. That's not the way it works. I mean, we're literally told that you're led away by your own desires. When you're, you're, you're led into temptation, when you're enticed by your own desires, when you surrender to those things, stop surrendering. Let God cut some stuff away. Get healed. Get delivered. From whatever that is. Well, that would mean my life would change. And I really like the way things are right now. And, you know, there's a passage in Hebrews chapter six where it talks about moving beyond the elementary things. Moving out of the elementary things, the elementary teachings of Jesus. And, 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 and look, at, you got that up there? I want to pull that on my device here. It's really slow. I got to get a better connection. Yeah, Palm Pilot. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to what does that word say? So there should actually be some resemblance of growth in our lives. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. And I don't think I gave him the rest of it, but it, it, it talks about all the the. This is the elementary things that God has talked to us about. That these are the elementary teachings. And pretty soon we need to move beyond elementary and start getting a little deeper. We can't live if all we're getting is milk. We've got to go deeper. I want to go back to, to Joshua chapter 5. I would, we're going to start in verse nine because I want you to. They, they, they. I, everybody's been circumcised. All this stuff's going on. It's this great day in the camp of Israel, right? Let's start in verse eight. It says, "And after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained uh, where they were in camp until they were healed." No joke, right? 
Ain't nobody moving around after that one. Then the Lord said to Joshua, today, come on, verse nine. Then the Lord said to Joshua, today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. How did he remove the reproach of Egypt? He had to cut some things away. Although these people had never been in Egypt. But yet there's still sin in their lives. There's still areas that need to be carved out, that need to be taken out, that need to be cut away. And he said, today, that reproach, that sin is gone. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. Verse 10, on the evening of the 14th day of the month. While camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. And here's what I want you to see. The manna, verse 12, the manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites. But that year they ate the produce of Canaan. He fed them with manna. Manna representing God's word. But I want you to understand, it's the elementary things of God's word. But there came a point where manna wasn't going to do it anymore. And they needed to get into the promises. The manna wasn't going to work for them anymore. You can't go back to the manna after this. God wants to take you deeper. He wants to take you higher. That that sounds great. Deeper and higher. But that's what he wants to do. And somebody once said new levels means new devils. So you can't just be happy living in the wilderness. You've got to begin to possess the promises of God, which means there's some hurt and some pain that God is going to bring on your life. As he cuts away the things that you don't want to let go of. As he cuts away those things that are keeping you from enjoying the fruit of the promised land. What is it that's in your life that's keeping you from going deeper? What is it in your life that's keeping you from taking that next step with God? Because God wants to bring you to some place great. He wants to bring you to that place of maturity where people are just like, wow, such wisdom and knowledge. Have I never heard from anyone? As you speak to them, they're just like, oh, I can feel like the hair standing up on my neck as you speak because of the power of the Holy Spirit that's in your life. You say, well, that, that can't happen. It did. It has. But until we allow him to cut some things away. And until we start putting some things down that we've been carrying around, we'll never be able to enjoy those promises. We'll be stuck in Manaville whenever he has so much more for us. He's got more for you. He's got more for you. Look at somebody next to you and tell them he's got more for you. He's got more for you. Me? <laughs> he's got more for you. Now look at that person that, that told you that and, and tell them God's got more for me. God's got more for me. <laughs> he does. He wants to take you to new levels. He wants to, 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 to get you to that place of maturity. And I'm going to promise you, you're going to feel like a failure the rest of your life. You're going, to, you're going to have all those days where you're like, I can never get there. I want to be at that place. But as you, as you grow, hopefully that, that, that goal, you get a little bit closer. 
You won't achieve complete maturity until the day you die. You won't. But that doesn't mean we don't still shoot for it. Not the dying, but the maturity. Some of you may be shooting for dying, but you know, it's just we, we've got to get to that next level. And then after we reach that level, there'll be another thing that God says, I want to cut this thing away now. And as he cuts away, we're able to step to that next level. And as he cuts this, this next thing away, we're able to step to another level. And pretty soon we got all of these victories behind us. And we could see the place that he's taken us. And we can begin to experience those promises. The fruit of heaven. You can have it today. The promises of God aren't for a far off place somewhere else. It's for right now. Victory isn't something that's waiting Years down the road, you can experience that victory that he, that only he can bring today. So will you let him? Will you let him begin to cut away? Will you listen as he says, I want you to break this relationship. Now, I'm not talking to husbands and wives, okay? That's not the relationship. Okay, because some of you guys are like, yeah, yeah we're done. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Dude, keep it biblical, all right? And some of your wives are like, I knew it. I'm leaving him today. <laughs> That's not the relationship that we're telling you to, to get out of. Just for clarification. But there are some things in your life, some people, some that are speaking venom into you that you've got to begin to sever. All right. You've got to stop that voice from speaking into you, keeping you beat down. There's some things you've got to stop in your life. Sin patterns. Things that you've gone around and around the mountain with and God's saying, let's cut that away so you can enter the promise. You know what it is. I pray God is revealing it to you today. That one thing that he's telling you, I want to dig this out today. And, and you know, the devil has this way of showing you everything all at once. And you start seeing all of your hangups and all of your problems. And it's just like, how could God ever love me? I am so messed up. I've got this problem, I've got this problem, I've got this problem. But you know what? God is great. He, he'll say, let's start with this one. Right. And then we'll take a step up to the next level. And then we'll, once, we're, once we're healed from this one, we'll start working on this one. And we'll, we'll get to the next level. And, and I'll bring victory after victory in your life. I mean, these same guys, they, they're, just, they're getting circumcised. And they're waiting for this healing so they can go and experience the blessings. I mean, just look at chapter 6. They, all they do is they walk around and start blowing some horns. What? And walls fall. Yeah. The enemy starts to run. And they're like, well, let's go get them. And that's what God has for you. you, th you, you the, the battle that you're going to fight, he's already got a victory prepared. And the problem that you're in, it didn't catch him off guard. The thing that you're struggling with, he's already, he's already said he's going to deliver you. And he can bring you through that. He can bring healing into your life. If you let him. But you've got to set some things down. There's some things he's asking you to set down. To allow him to remove. Are you willing? Because it's going to hurt. Are you willing to let him do what's necessary to take you to the next level? Because it won't be easy, but I promise you it's worth it. Some of you are at that place right now where that. That thing that you need to let go of is just wrecking you. You're stuck in that wilderness trying to make it work, but it's not working. 
you're out there thinking that this, uh, that, that you're going to be able to, if you can just hang in there, that you'll make it and you'll get through this thing and, and you'll, you know, eventually everything will work out. And... But God's saying, set it down. There's something in your life today that God's saying, I want to pull that out. And today, you can begin to let Him. You can offer it to Him today and say, God, I know this, this needs to go. And God, I know it may mean a major upheaval in my life right now, but I know You've got this. Because God's bigger. He's bigger. And He's able. And He'll bring you through it. Can we pray together this morning? Lord, this morning we come to You. Lord, You see what we're carrying around with us. You know that thing that's in our life that we're needing to let you cut away. And God, today I just, I ask for your grace to be in this place, for an empowering of your spirit to be here today as we offer these things to you today. God, as we bring you the sin patterns, as we bring you our bitterness, as we bring you our addictions, as we bring you our hurts, God, we want to give them to you today. God, as we bring you our unhealthy relationships. Lord, we know it's going to hurt. But we know that you're in control. We know it's going to hurt. But we know it's a good hurt. God, take us to that next level. Let us enter into the promises that you have for us. Speak victory over us again. Let us know what it means to have life and life more abundant. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take just a few moments to give you an opportunity. That is some, there's something in your life that God's speaking and He's saying, I want to cut this away. That there's something there that God is wanting to pull out and remove from your life. If there's something there, today you can begin the process. You can let the Holy Spirit come in. You can come and bring it. You can set it down. You can find you a place to pray along the front here. And you can bring that to Him today. You can let Him have it today. Will you stand with me? If you're here this morning, and there's something in your life that you're needing to set down, something that you're needing to let go of that God is wanting to cut away from your life if there's something there I promise you if it hurts and it will hurt but God will heal he will bring you to that place of restoration and you can step to that next level 
But if there's something in your life that's been just wrecking you, holding you back from those promises today, you can bring it up here and you can put it down and you can let God have it. And you can take that first step to the next step. So as the worship team plays, if you're needing a touch from God, if there's something in your life that doesn't belong, if there's something you want to surrender to Him today, come and do it. Like I said, you can find you a place to pray. You can kneel before your God. You can give it to Him today. If you need someone to pray with, we'd love to pray with you and agree for your deliverance from that thing today. Whatever your need, your God is here. And He wants to touch you. So while they play, if you need a touch from God today, I want to invite you to come.